Good morning. Um, happy Monday. Um, so, last video we made our Halloween collage clusters. So we're working towards um, getting our journal completed. I'm hoping to do this in the next couple of days. Um, today, tomorrow, hopefully. Um, so next, obviously, a lot of the clusters that we've used can be um, that we've created can be used as standalone tags, cards um etc for journaling on but some of them would look nicer did onto a, a proper tag base and that's what i've decided to make so the cover of the journal we made out of um some of this lovely tim holtz fabric obviously you know when you're making yours use whatever fabrics you like you don't have to use fabric at all you can paint you can um you could colour, you could leave it blank, you could use scrapbook paper, you could use book page, you use whatever you like. But I decided to use this fabric that I'd been hoarding forever. Because I've got quite a bit of it left, I think I've actually got even more than what I've got in my hands. But because I've got quite a bit of it left, I've decided to use some, uh, to make some fabric tags. Um, so I thought I'd just show you how I, how I made these and just uh, if you want to craft along with me. So I've got my fabric. Um, and I've got my tag bases. Now, I have some of these that um, I have coffee dyed and I thought these would be quite nice to give a nice coffee dyed back on these. Um, this is literally just, I think, old file folders that I have cut down into tag shapes. Um, I can tell they're not the bought, um, like Tim Holtz ones or, or whatever brand you, you buy um because they don't have the the hole punched out of them but i i want them plain because i'm going to put my own eyelets in there and, and because these are covered in fabric i don't want the bump of the um the hole reinforcer to, to show through um you can also do these just with plain bits of card you can do them in whatever shape or size you want these i buy from our favorite online retailer um really cheap in a box of sort of like 50 or 100 of them for like i don't know 10 15 quid you don't you don't have to spend a lot um they're quite thin but actually that's not a bad thing because by the time then you've either i use these as um either to make folios out of because they're quite obviously they're large you can fold in and, and make different bases out of them or cut down to make tags and once you've sort of embellished on them they start to thicken up um so it's quite nice that they start as quite a thin flexible base so you can manipulate them into whatever um layout you want for whatever project you're working on and then build on top without them being like super thick and chunky um and taking up too much room so so these are really good so you can literally cut them down to whatever size or shape you want you can buy angle punches um for the corners but you absolutely don't have to um i'm sure it's no great secret that um how to get an even cut on either side i'm just going to grab something uh you see this is one that i've cut down early so this is just a bit of scrap card so if i just show you on here literally whatever angle you decide you want to make your um tag corner cut the piece out so this is the piece we've cut away and literally flip it round so you know you get the same angle because otherwise you can stand there forever sort of trimming and trimming and trimming can't you um so I find this fiddly with my dodgy hands. So I do have a punch. I am lazy, but this is absolutely one of the easiest ways to do it. Um, that doesn't cost you a bean. Cut along the same line, and you've got that one. You've got the same angle on either side for for whatever size tag you want. Um, some people I've seen also use either an old. I say blockbuster video card but i don't know if many people know what that is either a, a debit card a credit card a trade card or store card or whatever um and cut a corner off and then use that as your guide and turn it either side to get a good um a decent angle um rt maze i think has also just released some acrylic tag um templates um like stacked ones so in three varying sizes so if that's something that you might find useful um have a, have a little look at those this is the one that i have which is um a we are memory keeper sort of crocodile version um that's coming off and that's this is the one that i use it's the same as the hole punch i have quite a few bits from we are memory keepers um and you, this one does either a large or a small angle i don't really use the small and i find it a little bit too small um but i'll show you either one so the small angle you literally you, you hold it you pull the sides of little wings open, you put your piece of paper or card in 
and punch and it gives you a little angle now that's if you're making a small tag i guess the super diddy angles all right but i prefer the larger one which is probably how i made these um so again put them in you've got some guides to make sure you keep them in place give it a punch and that's your angle and you know then you're going to get the same on either side so i find this quite useful um and less fiddly but you you do you whichever you find easiest so get rid of these then so basically what i've done is i've i've covered these in fabric i've stitched and then i've punched a hole through um i've left a, left a tattier edge on this one there is actually a bit of card peeking out there but never mind we'll get over that um this one not so much we've done quite neat so there's plenty of space for journaling on the back and then once these are done stitched and covered you've got a really nice interesting texture base to work on and if i grab my my pile of clusters i could literally just sort of you know add on to either one um and make a really nice tag base you know you can sort of build from there um obviously some of these see some of these like this one i'd actually inadvertently made a wee pocket so actually i could sort of stack that um might be quite cool um i mean again you could layer tag on tag you could get any of these little bases that you've made to fit and make yourself a nice little tag which is what we will do so i think what i'm going to do because obviously the clusters a selection of are going to go in the journal and a selection are going to go um in the halloween packs that will be on sale before the end of this week um if not probably by Wednesday. Um, I'm going to put a fabric tag in the packs as well. Um, not necessarily a coffee backed one, but but certainly a, a fabric tag that I will have stitched and, and put an eyelet in. So this is a super easy way to do it without glue. Uh, no messing here. Um, so basically, I'm going to get my tag. I'm going to use this piece. So this is the tag I'm going to work on and, and I'm going to leave that side as the back because I think that's the most interesting. And then this is the piece of fabric that I'm going to cover with. So what I'm going to do to start with is just decide which bit of fabric's going on it. Um, and I'm going to have sort of that top piece. I'm going to try and squeeze as many tags out of this as I can. You see, I'm hoping I can sort of, if I cut this down ever so slightly, get another one out of the bottom there maybe. You can't see that. Um, if I can get that at the top, I might make this an, a slightly slimmer tag, slimmer, shorter one, and, and get another one out of the bottom because all these extra little bits that I'm left with, I'm going to absolutely use. Um, we will not waste any of this because it's nice fabric. So I'm going to use that piece, give that a snip, and just tear it down. Um, just roughly into the shape that I want, into the size that I want. Um, sort of there-ish. And as I said, these little diddy pieces, we are going to do something with. I may even patchwork some bits. In fact, I think I probably will patchwork some big bits and mix it in with some other fabrics. Um, with maybe the smaller pieces. But little tag card, little uh, journey cards and, and smaller tags I can get out of these. So we will save all these pieces. So this is the bit of the threads that we've got for our tag. Uh, and we're gonna work on that side. So that's gonna be our tag. Now, rather than using glue, I mean, you can use glue, absolutely, that's that's not a problem, but I wanna, I'm lazy. So I'm gonna use double-sided tape. Um, and literally that's it. So all I'm gonna do I'm just going to come in a little bit just so I can see what I'm doing is I'm going to start at the very edge. I'm going to take my tape and I'm going to smush it on there. Now, bearing in mind, I'm going to stitch this. I don't want to use those. Um, if you have missed tiny gaps between strips of tape, don't worry about it because your fabric's not going to go anywhere. This is more my OCD that, that caused me to do this. A um, couple of things when you're using this tape is super, super sticky. So when you're trimming, use a pair of scissors that you don't mind if they get a little bit gunked up and you're going to have to give them a scrub. And the same with stitching. Even though we're going to cover this in the fabric, 
when it comes to stitching on the sewing machine, your needle is essentially going to be going through an awful lot of adhesive. So two things you could do there. You don't have to put tape all the way to the edges if you don't want to. Um, sorry, I'm dropping bits off my desk. You don't have to put tape all the way to the edges if you don't want to. You could just have it so it's held in the centre and then stitch around. You don't have to stitch at all. Once uh, You'll see in a second, but once these are covered, covered and cut, they look quite nice without the stitching, so you don't even need to stitch. The other thing you could do is hand stitch, of course. Um, there's nothing wrong with doing that. I mean, I guess you could even hand stitch or stitch on top and do whatever embellishing you want and then stick it down, but I think that would probably be more awkward. This is just the way I'm doing it. If my needle gets gunked up, I've got other needles on the sewing machine. I'm, I'm not so fussed, but um, again, it depends on what, what tools you're using um, and what you mind having to mess about cleaning. So that's my next one I'm going to use. I'm going to stick down. And I'm going to go all the way along. Again, if you're not going to stitch, you probably want to try and get all of the bits if you can. I've got a few different sizes of tape as well. So I'm going to be able to grab the very edge now. It doesn't quite fit but i want to go to the outer edge rather than the inner i don't mind that there's a smidge in the center there if you can see that there is a bit of a gap between the last two pieces but i do want to get it quite close to the edge and the same there I've, I've kind of missed a little bit at the bottom but it's not i'm not too fussed about that it's not the end of the world so once i've put this down i want to give it a good burnish do you call it it's sort of good squidge um and make sure i get any little creases or air bubbles out because they will show through most fabrics um and i want to make sure it's stuck down properly then get off i'm going to trim all along the edge i'm going to do this before i stick my fabric on um i just think that's the easy way to do it otherwise your fabric's going to be stuck to all the extra pieces and it's just gonna be a bit more faffy so i'm pulling these off get rid of those and i'm going to trim the other side so i hope everyone had a good weekend we had um evie's birthday on saturday and she was absolutely spoiled rotten she got so much stuff like so many gifts she's so lucky um and you can imagine the state of my house now absolutely covered and we only had eloise's birthday a few weeks ago so we're still we still haven't found homes for all the new toys that she got so um yeah it looks like toys are us in here it's crazy so we're going to take the other side off the the tape now i again with the hands i try and use um i use a, a whatever this is called knifey thing knife blade thing just to get the corners because i just find it easier but pull the strips off obviously bear in mind this is now super sticky so just mind how you go last little piece there we go get off right and then I'm going to take my piece of fabric. I find this easy to do it on the side. And I find it easy to line it up on my mat. Um, I don't know why. It makes no difference. But that's kind of just what I do. And then I'm going to just line it up. Knowing I've cut it to the right size. In fact, do you know what? Pull that off. I don't do it that way at all. That's an absolute lie. I do it this way around. Strike that. I line this side up. I thought that felt awkward. And I do it this way because I have more control over what I'm placing down rather than the fabric. So I do try and still line it up to keep it as straight as I can. And then this. And then I'm going to just push it down with this. Now, that's given me a really smooth edge. Now, I've got a few wonky lines, which is annoying, but... I mean, I can't. You could peel this off and, and adjust if you want to, but it's not the end of the world, is it, really? I might even be able to smush them back into being straighter lines. But anyway, there we are. So then you've got your fabric 
stuck to your tag. You've two choices then. I, on this one, have cut it straight. So you can see I've got some straight edges. Now they are starting to fray because that's what fabric does. But luckily the stitching is going to mean that this, even though it's going to fray, doesn't really bother me. I don't mind the frayed bits and it's not going to go anywhere. This one I left the edges fluffy. Now I'm not so sure how I'm feeling about the fluffy. I don't know if I inked maybe. I might feel a bit happier about the fluffy. Um, yeah, I'm not sure I do. I think that actually I prefer the neater but frayed edges rather than the fluffy edges but again whatever you think is best so i'm going to trim this down again i'm going to use my scissors i'm not so fussed about just in case any of the adhesive is sort of ever so slightly hanging and, and we catch it and i don't want to ruin my good scissors but i'm going to go all the way along they're not brilliant these scissors i have to say but and trim those down Right to the top. Right around. Oh, get off. And then to the bottom. As I say, you're going to get some fraying whether you like it or not, but don't worry. Let's say it just adds to the texture and it means that um, because presumably if you're stitching, it isn't going to go anywhere. To be honest, even without stitching with the tape, it isn't going to go anywhere. The tape is super strong. And unless you're purposely trying to peel the fabric off, which in which case it will come off, um, I wouldn't worry too much. So, yeah, so that's what we're left with. I'm just going to shove these bits away. Next thing I'm going to do is um, stitch. So I'm going to stitch around. Get my sewing machine out. So I'm going to see if I can get this way. You can see what I'm doing. Kind of. Just put the feet out on this. Right, so I'm going to start with a straight stitch and quite a long straight stitch. I'm using a black thread because I want the contrast and I want um, I want it to be spooky. That's that's what we're going for. So I think the black thread will look better. But again, you choose whatever you want to choose, uh, depending on whatever fabric you've used. So I'm going to stitch around. And when I stitch, and I promise you it is on purpose, I do it scruffily I, I don't do it neat so i like the wonky lines I, I don't want to go over the same line several times i go around maybe three four times um and get this sort of scruffity edge all the way around if i go off the edge i'm not bothered if it's if i've got threads hanging i'm not bothered um and i start with the straight stitch so let's do that now i'm lining up um you probably can't see but I'm lining up um, my centre line on my foot with, um, and then the line to the right of that with the edge of the tag. So I'm going to keep it fairly in the same place. But again, I'm not going. I'm not going to be neat about this. So we're doing it a probably what's that a quarter of an inch in from? Is that a quarter of an inch? Yeah, that might be about a quarter of an inch in from the edge of the tag is where I'm placing my stitching. But again, however you want to do it. And I find that when I do it quite fast, it, it looks a bit more natural. These sort of wibbly wavy lines rather than me trying to do them on purpose to make them look scruffy. So a bit of speed stitching. I still want to get the angles of the tag. But I try my best then on the second time around not to go over the same lines if I can help it. Because I want it to look scruffy. I try and overlap the lines sometimes. I think they look quite nice. Do my tag corners in different angles. So it's a bit more time consuming obviously than just going around the ones but I think the effect that it has, I think it looks a lot better. Um, I, I really like it anyway. A bit further. 
so I'll go back a couple. Doesn't help that I'm wearing really thick Ugg slippers and I can't actually feel the pedals. <laughs> will be the last time around. And then I'm just going to backstitch one. So I didn't feel any sort of resistance or such on my needle, but if you look, you see all that gunk I've just pulled off of it. You, you can't see it from there, but the needle is quite gunky now. So... It is going to need a wipe down afterwards just to get all the sticky residue off. But it's quite easy to stitch through in the first instance. But you've got to bear in mind, as you're stitching through the tape, you're pulling the adhesive back through. So just be mindful of that. What I'm going to do next, now I've done the straight stitching, is I'm going to go around and add the zigzags in. And um, I've seen some people do this and sort of stitch and then change the stitch and then zigzag and then change it back. But I just find it too easy just to go back over the top of the straight stitching with the zigzag. So... I, trend, I tend to do sort of a top and a bottom at whichever side. Um, I've done them all this side, so I'm going to do the other this time. So I'm going to line it up. I'm going to have quite a wide stitch because I want it to be quite noticeable. And I'm going to do it probably um, less than half of the tag, but not right at the top or right at the bottom. I'm going to sort of bring it down a little bit. So, And then back stitch a little bit and leave it there. So I've done, so you see, it's probably half the length of the tag, but I've done it sort of slightly down from the top. And then, in fact, I'm going to do another little bit down here, I think. And there we are. Can you see? So we've got the two lots of stitching. And I like that. And it almost reminds me a bit of Frankenstein's monster-ish, that we, it looks like we've sort of patched this together. Um, so yeah, happy with that. Super gunky needle. Um, next, then we're going to put the that way. We're going to put the eyelet in. So again, depending on how what you use to put your eyelets in, um, get whatever equipment you need. Some people use the the proper punch presses. Um, again, hands I can't do that, so I use this. Um, which is, uh, again, the We Are Memory Keepers one. I promise this isn't sponsored by anyone. <laughs> it's just the stuff I use. Um, I'm going to get quite a small eyelet. I've got um, sort of a rusty brown colour. And I'm going to turn it round and I'm going to punch with the bigger of the two holes, which is the bigger of the two. I don't know what size it is. I don't know why I'm attempting to tell you, but it's the bigger of the two. Um, I'm going to kind of line it up somewhere kind of middle-ish punch and release now you can see because it's fabric the fabric has pulled through now you could just trim it off you could just leave it but what I prefer to do just because it's me is I'll take my eyelet put my eyelet in and then take my eyelet out and it pushes the fabric through the hole and it's come out the back you see as well as the cardboard actually because obviously it's all stuck to it and then I prefer to just trim that side and just make it look a bit neater. I don't I don't know why that bothers me, but it does. And that's kind of how I do it. I just find it easier. Push the eyelet through. It'll push the fabric through. And then nothing's coming out this side. And you've got a nice, neat eyelet. So I'll shove it back in. Give it a squidge. And there we go. And that's the tag. Super easy. Super easy. Um, as I said, you know, we, you don't just have to do the this size tag you do smaller tags you can do journaling cards which is probably what i'm going to do with the square some of the squarer pieces um these ones i might make some little mini tags to go in um but yeah i just think that they're, they're super easy uses up the fabric that you've got matches the journal um and then once you've got your clusters sorted or you could do whatever you know if you want to put something different on the top or indeed if you want to leave them um you, you know whoever gets your journal might want to um attach their own photographs maybe um or or whatever bits and pieces they've got so i just pick and choose some of these you know i think these look quite cool um 
yeah or whatever embellishments you want but yeah i'm happy with those well I can add some um lace or silk um uh, we've still got our basket of bits and pieces and i've got the dyed ribbon um that i made so if i just cut a chunk of that off Pop this through and the eye looks quite small so we might only get one half through this but let's have a go shall we it's quite thick this lace so yeah depending on how you want to top it and then obviously we've got the charms and stuff we're going to add um little bits and pieces we can add on cool and then embellish them however you want I'm, you know i'm sure you don't need me to tell you how to to do that in your own style but this is kind of how i do it and um, yeah i'm really pleased with those so happy days i just thought i'd share that's the next step so i'm going to knock up a load of these um and then the last thing we're going to do well the next thing we're going to do is pockets and pages um so we'll we'll go through the pages we'll stitch any bits that need stitching we'll attach the pockets and then we'll stitch it into the cover um and then the last bits will be to finish decorating the cover embellish some of the bits and pieces um throughout with with the bits we got from the kit with the extra bits that i've got and then we're we're all done um so yeah cool right happy days i will leave it there thank you very much for joining me Bye bye